what we're paying. And again, if we don't have the money, how can we pay it? So again, we can't just say, well, if we only fund, yeah, that'd be great if we had the money. Again, if I mandate you have to spend $100,000 every year, and you make $100,000 this year, but next year you only make 89000 we wouldn't keep on happening. You. But I didn't bring in 100000 so how can I keep funding it? So we have to restructure, and new contracts have to be much more changed as it goes forward for the teachers and other pensions. We just can't afford to keep living the way we're living. Again, we have to honor our word, but going forth has to be a new ball game. And you know, transparency, it's important, right? If I show you, I say, look, this is what we got. I mean, I'm not lying. So that's important to the transparency. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lagana. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, we, we, we have to rewind uh, many years and, and look at why we're in this mess to begin with, and it's the politicians' fault why we're in this mess. It's not the teachers' fault. It's not our public employees' fault. It, uh, a long time ago, they decided that they were going to pull money, pull money out of the pension fund to give out tax breaks and pay for all these uh, these wonderful state programs that we had the money for, and they did it on the backs of, of our teachers and public employees who are our middle class working people. I have two daughters. I drop them off every morning to the teachers to care for them all day, uh, and, and, and I love them very much. They're great people. Our police officers, our first responders, who do so much for us. They deserve their pensions, and I will tell you that the average New Jersey pension is twenty-six thousand dollars a year. Despite what everybody says, they're very small pensions. Uh, people work very hard for them, and people contributed to these pensions. They're not premiums. Um, rewinding a little bit, uh, or fast forwarding a little bit to when uh, when Chris Christie signed the bill into law, it was hailed as a great accomplishment. Uh, members of my caucus, I wasn't there at the time, but members of my caucus put their necks out on the line uh, to, to support this legislation. There were deals that were made. Uh, the unions were not happy with it, uh, but at the end of the day, they realized that for the pensions to be solvent, they had to uh, come up with a deal where they would uh, pay more into their pensions, into their health benefits, and in turn, the state would uh, pay a uh, certain amount of money per year into the fund to make sure that it was solvent and for a period of seven years. Uh, now, the state only lived up to its obligations for a very short time. Uh, the the uh, unions were still having to pay more in uh, the, the pension and health benefits, and the state just said we weren't going to do it. As Assemblyman Eustace said, we presented budgets since I've been here, the two years that I've been here, we presented budgets that had the money to fund the pensions. Just to be clear, the money, the budget had the money to fund the pensions. The, the governor vetoed with his light out of veto, because at the end of the day, the budget is his. That's his budget. He lied out and vetoed, uh, and in doing so, created, just by missing these pension payments, indebted the state of New Jersey an additional $5 billion in debt service by not making these payments. So we're the ones being fiscally responsible. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Coppola, uh, next question. With so many companies leaving New Jersey and the jobs also leaving New Jersey with them, what do you plan to do to keep companies and jobs in New Jersey and District 38? How do you plan to make New Jersey attractive to companies to bring the jobs back? Good question, thank you. And um, you know, look, as a business owner myself, with a staff of 21 people, I've been in business 22 years. Um, you know, I get it. Uh, when you, I can't tell you how many business owner colleagues and friends of mine are like, I can't, can't live here. I can't, you know, I gotta leave, I gotta move my business, I gotta move my shop, I gotta move my restaurant. Mercedes Benz, gone. Hoffman Roche, gone. Hertz, gone. We, we can't let that happen. Now, I know it's going to be easy to say, well, you know, point the finger here and there. You know, it's a team effort. You got a Senate, an Assembly, and a Governor. So, you know, you're a team. And it's, you can't say it's any one person's fault. So there's plenty of blame to go around. But so we have to do something. You've got to keep these. You can't let a Mercedes go. And again, you can point fingers. But, you know, because when Mercedes goes, the restaurants go next to Mercedes. The dry cleaners next to the restaurants next to Mercedes goes. So, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so you could do things like a tax holiday, like New York's doing, you know, with 10 years, you know, you could simply just ask for less in taxes. And, you know, that, to say you need more in taxes, that's like taking an Advil for a brain tumor. You know, you need to buck up, be disciplined, you gotta give these businesses the break that they need because in the long run, it's better for all of us Restaurants open, the tailor opens, the bars open, the, the you know the schools open for something like a Mercedes. So it's not just Mercedes, but when you hammer them and say no, we gotta have this tax. All right, they're gone. And what you know again, what did that accomplish? So 
um, you know, as a business owner myself, I mean, I get it, and it's very important. You know, it's very tempting to, to want to squeeze up front and, and get that get the higher tax rate, but look what it does. They're gone. Three companies that rattle off. I can go on, but um, so that's it. Mr. Madonna, how do you plan to make New Jersey uh, attractive again for companies? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I think we have to keep in mind, first and foremost, that uh, most uh, a majority of businesses in New Jersey are small businesses, and we have to concentrate on making uh, the climate better for small businesses. Sometimes businesses leave, and we get that. The state has offered $6 billion in corporate tax breaks over the past six years, so uh, sometimes companies are just going to leave. And um, we have to uh, really revisit who we're giving these tax breaks to. There's a certain company we gave a $110 million tax break to and created zero jobs. $110 million tax break, zero jobs. So some, some of these tax breaks need to be reevaluated. I sponsored several pieces of legislation, uh, and you know, most glaring is my, my bill that would bring the company Dave & Buster into New Jersey. Right now they're precluded from coming into New Jersey. Uh, and by the way, the bill's been sitting on November's desk for four, four months. Uh, you know, bipartisan piece of legislation, they want to open up six locations in New Jersey, one of them uh, right here in our district. Uh, it's going to bring 150 to 175 construction jobs, as many sustained jobs, uh, and six throughout the state. So. I've, I've actually sponsored legislation that's going to bring businesses into New Jersey. Um, I've also sponsored legislation that would give uh, tax breaks to uh, businesses that hired the long-term unemployed, uh, small businesses, and tax breaks to small businesses that hired veterans who have an extremely high unemployment rate and, and really need our help. Uh, I've also sponsored legislation that would give, uh, or that would eliminate the uh, capital gains tax on the sale of a small business up to a million dollars to encourage entrepreneurship. Uh, so I've, I've been out there, I've, I've, I've received the endorsement of the New Jersey Business and Indi Industry Association, and uh, I think because they recognize my, um, my willingness to, to stand by businesses. So, um, you know, there's, uh, Mr. Cole is right, it, it is a team effort, and uh, we really need to do more as a state, but also reevaluate who's getting the major tax breaks in the state. Mr. Eustace, can you please add to that? <laughs> I can. Um, I do want to say I've been a small business owner for over 30 years in this business and a business before that. I was the president of our Chamber of Commerce for 20 years. I know deep in my heart how small businesses succeed and fail here in New Jersey. All is not bleak. You're sitting in a town that is one of the most successful retail zip codes in the country. Many businesses do very well here in New Jersey and certainly here in Bergen County. Companies like Mercedes leave because they're not getting enough ta tax breaks. One of the bills that we sponsored this past year, and, and if I'm correct, I think Selena Magana and I both sponsored it, is that we wanted those tax incentives to go to companies that could prove they had long-lasting jobs. The problem is we hand out the money to these major corporations and have no way of finding out whether or not they've created the jobs. So what we're trying to do is make sure we ensure jobs are indeed created. The governor made it illegal to sell Teslas in the state of New Jersey, an American product designed by an American an American car, an American idea, the, the very heart of American entrepreneurial spirit. The governor made it illegal to sell those cars in the state of New Jersey. I sponsored a bill in the assembly that was again sponsored in the Senate and passed and finally signed by the governor so that you can drive a Tesla here in Paramus. You can buy one. There are two stores here in Paramus. We brought jobs. We brought businesses to our district. We find it our responsibility. We find ourselves fiscally responsible and very business positive. We work very hard to make, make sure our businesses get here. And I need to reiterate, this is a very successful part of the country. Not everyone is fleeing New Jersey. Thank you. Um, now, uh, Mr. Lagana, I'm going to ask you the next question. Um, what actual improvements uh, have you made to flood control for uh, District 38? What or what would you propose to make? Sure, uh, there are each each municipality we represent has, uh, has different issues uh, and different problems, and there are many municipalities in our district, uh, like Saddlebrook, like Milford, uh, like River Edge, that have uh, and Lodi like, that have had uh, terrible flooding problems. Uh, Assemblyman uh, Yusuf and I have both sponsored legislation uh, that would uh, make it easier for municipalities to go in and uh, actually clean the areas of the river that are in their towns. Because uh, unfortunately, you know, this is an area that is um, regulated and in some instances over-regulated because municipalities aren't permitted to go in uh, because of DP considerations and EPA considerations. Uh, so we sponsor legislation to make it easier 
uh, whereby municipalities can go in a certain footage into, into the rivers to clean up, to snag they called it, uh, because a lot of the problem was caused by uh, just rubbish in, in, the, uh, in these rivers. Uh, other other uh, pieces of legislation that we sponsored are uh, legislation that would update the flood maps, the FEMA flood maps, the flood maps we were working on. Uh, we're working off of, we're extremely old. Uh, we've had terrible uh, rain events, uh, the Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Sandy, which, which caused uh, significant problems. Uh, but uh, dealing with uh, dealing with environmental disasters is uh, was always a, a difficult thing for each municipality. And uh, unfortunately, the the, uh, the environmental process is a little bit slow because of the because there are a lot of regulations. But we've been on the forefront of that. Uh, we've met with our municipalities uh, to get what their issues are. We've had uh, we've had meetings with uh, the mayor of Saddlebrook, with uh, Mayor Bodai, and, and uh, the mayor of uh, River Edge, some of those areas, uh, to talk about how much more we can help. But uh, at this point, you know, we sponsored several pieces of legislation, and our ears are always open, and we're always available to them. Uh, for if there is any state funding to help them out. Thank you. Mr. Coppola, is there uh, legislation that you think you would propose to help District 38 in flood control? Right. Well, as we know, right, as um, Mr. Lugana uh, said and alluded to, I mean, updating our maps and, um, you know, places like, right, Lodi, Rochelle Park. And this is something where I think legislation could be of use. Um, you know, to, and I'm sure there are already building codes and how high we, you, know, you have to build uh, in certain areas that are prone to flooding. I used to live in a home that, that got flooded. Um, you know, so uh, changing codes if need be, uh, transparency to the customer, which usually, they said I've owned a few homes, they usually do tell you, is it a floodplain or not? Uh, but um, like 